Want to create some custom footer for your Gutenberg WordPress website and turn that simple plain footer that comes with your WordPress theme and make it look something like this? Mm. Then let's dive in and I'll show you everything step by step. So in our WordPress setup, make sure you have the plus add-ons for block editor free as well as the pro version. And in order to create our custom footer, we are going to use the pro version of Nexter WP theme, which allows us to create our custom header and footer using the Nexter builder. And once we are done with the setup, we can now move on to Nexter builder to build our custom footer. So if we click on this, here we have the list of already created template for this site. And in order to create a new template for our footer, we need to click on add new. So let's click on this. And first let's give our footer template a name. So we will call it custom footer, pretty straightforward. And now in the next builder layout settings, we will select the option sections and then choose footer. And under footer style, we need to choose normal, fixed or smart. So for now, we will choose normal. And below that, we need to choose the display rule where we want to show this footer. So for that, we need to choose include in and we want to show this footer for our entire site. So we will choose the first option. You can play around with other options as well if you want to design a specific footer for any specific page. So for now, let's select entire website and then click on publish. And if we refresh our front end right now, we will see a blank footer, which means that our custom footer, which is blank right now, have already replaced default theme footer. So now we can come back here in our next builder and start adding Gutenberg blocks to create our custom footer. So let's close this setting section first and let's start by adding our container block first. So we will choose TP container block and we will choose a row style and we will choose this layout option. And for the first one, we will start by adding our heading. So we will choose TP heading block. And here on the right hand side, we have the main title as well as a subtitle. So first we will select this simple style. And then for the main heading, we will write something like this to join our newsletter. And for the subheading, we will write a simple text like this. For the layout, we will align this to left and then we will move on to our style section to do a little bit of styling here. And here we can give styling to our main title as well as our subtitle. And this one is going to be pretty straightforward. We can go ahead and change typography, color and give some margin padding. So let me just quickly customize that. All right, once we are done with this heading, we can now choose to add another block. So we will click on insert after. And here we are going to add our MailChimp newsletter block. So we will type in TP MailChimp. And with this simple block, we will be able to capture email addresses of our visitors and then save that in our MailChimp account. Let's go do some styling for this one as well. So for the subscribe button, we simply go ahead and change the background color, something like this. And let's open this list view, select the container, and we will go to flex properties to align all the row elements to center. And we will justify the column with space between. Let's update this here and refresh our front end. So this is how our blank footer looks like. Let's refresh it. So now we have a join newsletter text as well as an email capture form here. And if we click on this MailChimp block here, we can edit all the settings to link this to our MailChimp account. Once we are done with this, let's go ahead and click on this container block. And then we will click on insert after to add another container below this. So let's add another container block. And this time we are going to choose a two column layout. And in the left hand side, we will add our TP logo block. So with this, we will be able to upload any image as a logo. 
and right now it is set on normal instead of that we can choose a double logo so here we will be able to add two images so the first one will be the default one and the second image will act as a hover image so let me show you how it works so first let's select the normal image so we will select this one and instead of thumbnail let's choose full image size and same for the hover image we will select the second version of the same logo and once again instead of thumbnail we will select the full size view and now if we mouse over on this logo here you can see that it's switching between the two images that we have just uploaded and under extra options we can go ahead and give it a custom link or by default it will get linked to the home page of our website all right after this let's add another block and here we are simply going to type in a paragraph and for our tp site logo we will come back here in advanced section and for spacing we are going to add some margin in the bottom so this is going to add a little bit of gap between the logo and the text and after that we will move on to the second container and here we are going to add some site links and for that we are going to use tp stylish list block so let's select this one so with this block we will be able to add list items and to enter the text we need to use this list content area so for the first one here we can type in any text and then give a url so that we can link it with any page along with that we have icon type so here right now it is set on font awesome icons so we can change the icon from here and as we are building a footer we can simply select none so that we can have some simple link list or you can also upload an image instead of an icon so right now i will leave it on none and we also have an option for hint so you can enter a hint text once we mouse over on this link or maybe you can enter a tooltip so this one will also be visible over this text but right now we will keep it very simple so we will turn off both of these options and let's remove the next two and we are going to use the same style so i'm going to duplicate this one only and now we can simply add some text and give a page url so let me update that quickly all right now let's go to style and here is an interesting option in extra options we have hover inverse so let's turn this on and here we have an option for effective area right now it is set on individual we are going to change that to global and here we have the global id option so let's call it footer list now what does this hover inverse does we will check that in just a few minutes so right now we will just copy this id here let's close this one and duplicate this complete block something like this and let's come back here on our main container and in the flex property let's turn that to horizontal so that our blocks will be in one single row and we will align them in middle and we will keep them as space between for the column justification now let's go ahead and quickly update the text for this second one as well all right so now we have updated the text and if we come back here in style and in the extra options we have already set the effect area to global and global list id is footer list because we have just duplicated the same block now as we have given the same id to both of these list block now once we mouse over on any of these links both of the blocks are getting dimmed down and the main text is getting highlighted if we duplicate this again as the global link id is same now if we mouse over on any element it's going to dim down all the three blocks so this hover inverse effect looks really cool if we choose the effect area as global so let's update the text for this one as well and then in the style we can update the typography and font style as well so this is how the footer links look after updating the font size and color so let's update this here and let's refresh the front end so this is how our footer looks like so we come back here and for this main container we go to flex property and for we will select as horizontal 
and for the row alignment we choose top and for column alignment we will choose space between and in the advanced section let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding from the top so we will choose 30 pixel let's update this here and after this let's go ahead and add another container and once again we will choose the horizontal layout and for the first one we will simply add a text and after this we will click on insert after at this time we are going to choose social media icons so we will choose tp social icons from this block and here again we can choose various styles so maybe we can select this one or maybe like this one and for social networks we have facebook youtube twitter by default and if we click on this we can change the network from the list here and with this link option we can give the link for the social media account and below this we can change the background so let's change this to our theme color all right same goes with the youtube let's change the background color the border will be blue once again same for the twitter and then maybe we can add one more network so from the list maybe we can select instagram and here we can give the link for the instagram profile and let's change the background color from here and if we go in the style let's change the icon size a bit like this one and now we come back here in our main container and in the flex property we will choose row alignment as center and we will choose the space between for the column justification and once again if we go back in advance and here for the padding let's add 30 pixel from the top and 30 pixel from the bottom let's update this here and if we refresh our front end once again this is how our footer looks like and if we mouse over on this logo here we can see the hover image effect and for the links if we mouse over on any of the link rest of the other links are getting dimmed down so this is how easy it is to create a custom footer for your gutenberg wordpress website if you like this video then make sure you give it a like and if you want to deep dive in the world of wordpress using gutenberg then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video